Again, folks, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. We are going to look in the book of 1 Peter today for a couple minutes at some things. Peter was an apostle of Jesus Christ, says so in chapter 1, verse 1. To the strangers is who he was writing the book throughout Pontus Galatia or in, in uh, Cappadocia and Asia and Bethsaida. Now what he's saying is everywhere in the world from where the point where he is, he's the, at the focal point there in Jerusalem and he's saying reaching out throughout the world, whoever comes along after him uh, is going to be the elect. Verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification. How are we elect? We elect through sanctification. Now, it is God's will that every man, that no man go to hell, but that every man die and go to heaven. But the only way that a man is going to die and go to heaven is if he repents of his sin and says, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. Now, let's see. Here, the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the spirit of obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ unto you, and peace be multiplied. Now the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ came when Jesus took his blood to the altar of God, his Father, back up to heaven where he came from, sprinkled it on the mercy seat where all the foreknowledge of God happens to be. All of the foreknowledge of God happens to be at that mercy seat of uh, the Father God. And Jesus sprinkled that blood there, covering every, every single living soul that would be born could by choice choose that covering or reject it. If he rejects it, he's out from under that covering. If he accepts it, he is under that covering. Blessed be the God, he said, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He was the first to re resurrect that stayed alive. There was others that resurrected in the Bible, but they died again. But Jesus resurrected and went to the Father and is not dead. Is sitting at the right hand of the Father today, interceding for you and I. Those of us who have, are at the mercy seat right there in front of Jesus, Jesus is seeing, he is praying for. I don't know how they look, perhaps twinkling like stars. I don't know because it does talk about us being stars. Or it may be a pile of stones and we're a living stone, the Bible said. We are living epistles, the Bible said, known and read of all men. We are to walk circumspectly to the Word of God. And if we will walk circumspectly to the Word of God, we will be living epistles for Jesus Christ. To finish that verse 2, Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. That's through the sanctification that comes by the word. When I was an alcoholic, a drunk if you please, uh, at the age of 30, I got sanctified. How did I get sanctified? You know, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. All I had to do was one thing. I looked up to heaven and said, God, I am a sinner. Poof! The Lord took away all alcohol from me, all cussing, swearing, stealing, lying, cheating, Boom, it was gone. It's three o'clock in the morning, nobody there, but the Lord and myself. And God saved my soul. And now I have been sanctified since. Can you get dirty again? You can wall in the dirt of this world, if you please. But you know that you're only one prayer away from being cleaned back up. When that baby... Uh, does a little something in his diaper. His mama don't throw him out. She removes the diaper, removes the dirt, and 
puts a clean uh, linen back on him and he's ready to go again. And that's the way you and I are. Sometimes we're like babies. We soil ourselves sometimes on a daily basis and have to daily, continually say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. But the Bible said his mercy endureth forever and he will forgive you. And I tell you, there's a picture in the Bible. He said, forgive your brother 70 times 7. That's 490 times. In what, what, time, what period of time? It said in one day. <laughs> in one day. Have you ever worked around somebody that continually cussed? That continually did things that bothered you all day long and you're working beside them for eight solid hours and 490 times they cuss? And you are, you are to say, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive them. Help me, Lord, to be an example to them so they will learn uh, someday to get saved and not cuss anymore. And help me to be that one, Lord, that shows them mercy. Help me to be that one that is pleasant in spite of the fact they know that they're harassing me by doing that. Oh, I've been around people that cuss more when they see me coming. They just go to cussing up a storm. And I say, how you doing? How you doing? Let that go in one ear and out the other. Listen, the devil wants you to walk by them and not say anything to them. The devil wants you to steer clear of them and therefore you're not an example to them. You want to be an example to them? Stand up against that which is coming at you from the devil. Let's look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, <laughs> there's that word, mercy, that word mercy, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again to a lively hope, a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Do you know I was a worthless, no good sinner, as good as dead, as far as the spiritual life is concerned. My life was headed for hell. H-E-L-L, -L, the place of fire. Gehenna, read it, look at it, study it. There are many places in the Bible. If you want to start somewhere, start in Luke 16 and verse 19. And up. And then it said the inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and it fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Do you remember in reading in the Old Testament, do you remember about the three boys, the Hebrew boys that got thrown in the fire? The fire did not touch their bodies. The fire burnt the ropes, burnt the external off from them, burnt what was visible, visible by the eye, the things of the world, the ropes that were around their hands and feet. Burned the ropes off. And the Bible said that they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them when they came out of the fire. When Jesus went to the grave and walked through hell, took the keys of hell and death away from the devil, when Jesus did that, he walked through the fire. The fire had no, no touch, no nothing on the spiritual body of man. When we get our new spiritual bodies, we will be able to go into the fire, walk through the fire, and the fire will have no effect whatsoever on our bodies, our new bodies, when we get our new bodies. And blessed be the God, he said, and to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved for you and I in heaven. <laughs> Positionally, when you get saved, God has some way of absolutely knowing that another soul got saved and he is in the presence of God. By the way, the Bible said in the presence of the angels in heaven, when a man gets saved, there's rejoicing. Great rejoicing going on in heaven. Great rejoicing going on in heaven and the angels are witnesses of that great rejoicing when somebody gets saved. That one soul that gets saved then there's great rejoicing in heaven. Who are kept by the power of God 
through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Our eternal salvation is going to be revealed in the last time. And the last time is going to be revealed by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and you and I physically receiving in heaven that which is prepared for us. Now Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and get you and take you where I am and give you this reward that is prepared for you in heaven. And where do you get that reward? I have a crown of righteousness that I got at the day of salvation. I was given a gift of a crown of righteousness. When I get to heaven, I'm going to a marriage supper. And when you go to a marriage, you carry a gift. I am going to be my first gift when I get to heaven is going to be the crown that is on my head that was a gift to me. And I am going to give that gift to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The three that are one, yet are able to separate themselves from that one. Now I tell you what, let's take a look at man. Man is born of blood and water, and he is born first of his mother's womb, blood and water. That's the first birth. The second birth is when he's born of Jesus Christ, saying, I am a sinner. That's the second birth. And then, when the body goes to the grave, the soul goes to heaven to be with God in the spirit. Yet the body on the, is here on the earth. The soul is gone to be with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And then later on, you're going to rejoin that body. God is going to take that body, put them back together, and you are going to stand, body, soul, and spirit, as one person, in front of God. But you are going to go, your soul and your spirit is going to go to be with God when your body goes to the grave. And you are going to stand before the righteous God. There is going to be a judgment there. A judgment seen in heaven. Called the judgment of works. That is the works that we have done since God left us here on this earth to do His work. We are left here for only one reason. And that reason is, is to do the work of God and win other souls, be a witness to others, that others who are headed for hell uh, would have the opportunity to go to heaven. Are you making a spiritual impression today? Are you in the book? Are you in God's book, the Bible, the Word of God? Jesus said in the beginning, I was the Word. I became flesh and dwelt among you. And I went back to the Father and I became the Word again. If you please, you have Jesus Christ in your hands when you have the Word of God. The Holy Spirit that wrote this book takes it and puts it in to you so that you can put it out to others. And that's the important thing. If you're not in it, you can't put it out. If you're not in it, you can't live out of it. You have to be in it to live out of it. You have to experience, know what it says and experience what it says. To read it and see it is one thing. To know what it says is to have it in you. And when you have it in you, it can come out of you. Wherein ye greatly rejoice now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Long as we're in this body, we're going to have manifold temptations. Like I said, if you're standing beside somebody working eight hours a day and he's a cussing and swearing and carrying on and telling dirty jokes and doing everything he can because he knows you are saved, what you have to do is just revert to him, say, God loves you. Every time he swears, cusses, say, God loves you. If he cusses, God loves you. He's, he's hounding you. <laughs> he's hounding you with the devil. You hound him with the truth. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Every time he opens that nasty mouth, God loves you. Every time he opens his nasty mouth, God loves you. He's going to get mad at you. 
He gonna get mad and cuss a stream of cuss words at you. And all you do is say, well, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. <laughs> and you know what? You'll win that guy. You will eventually win that guy. Because when he gets in trouble, he's going to want what you got. When he, and when he, God could break his leg right there the same day. And you can say, well, you know something? God loves you. He's not allowed you to break your leg so you can slow down a little bit. Take a look. Take a look at where you are, who you are, and, and what, what you could be, and what could be before you, and the life you could have, and the everlasting life you could have, and not burn in hell forever with the devil. Verse 7, But the trial of your faith, being much more precious than a gold, and that more precious through being tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at that. Tried with the fire. <laughs> Tried with the fire. You know what that fire is? That fire today for you and I out here in this world today. The fire of this world today is many things. That This is talking about several types of fire if you want to go and study it out. But the fire that we're talking about today is the fire darts of the devil that are being cast at you through other people, through those you work around, those you are around. And like I say, just just don't fail. Do not fail to put this in your repertoire. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. No matter what. God loves you. That's it. In mind. Whom have we, we have not seen? Him personally. Yet, we know when we invite Him into our heart, he did come in, and he's there. How do you know that, Brother Peter? Because of the 100% change in my life, personally. A 100% change in my own life, personally. And now, so I know that what I have is real. I've been born twice. I was born of my mother. I was born of the Holy Spirit. And I will live forever because of that. If I was only born once and I died, I would die two deaths. I would die the death of the body on this earth first, and then I would die the death of the pronouncement of God saying, be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever and ever to be tormented by that fire and known by that fire. If you will study the Bible, you will find out the devil was, uh, had a place prepared for him and his fallen angel, which is called hell. The Bible also said that hell is having to enlarge itself because of the intruders that are going in there today. You take when a, a whole group of people uh, end up going to hell. The, the, today, the hell is so full, the tremors of the earth have had to get more and more. The earthquakes have had to get more and more because hell's having to enlarge itself. And do you know what? Do you think the devil is going to treat an intruder nicely? You got another thought coming. But I got another thing to tell you that in hell there is none, nada, no such a thing as anything good. That word nice is not in hell. The word, there is nothing, nothing, nothing good in hell. Nothing. All is misery. All is pain. All is eternal squirming uh, of like a worm. The Bible said the soul of that man is going to squirm like a worm. Want to die yet can't die. He's going to have the vision before him of all, everything that passed through his life. He's going to have the desires in hell of all the things he desired on this earth that were wicked and fleshly, and yet he's not going to be able to have one of them. He's not going to be able to have one good thing. Nothing that a man would consider good is he going to be able to have when he gets to hell. Hell is real. Hell is not just fire. It is a place of total torment from the miseries 
and the things that are in the mind of man that are going on. We see hell reaching up from beneath today. We can turn the television on and you see more and more people with less and less clothes. You see more and more vocabulary with more and more devil talk. You see more and more of the devil coming into your living room through your television set. I wonder, we had a, a program on last night. It was uh, supposedly going to be a good program. But what it was all about was about the adultery of a man and a woman. I, committing adultery with each other. I told my wife, turn it. It got down the road a little ways and I got looking at it and I said, you know this is nothing but about adultery and we do not need it in our house. We do not need to watch it. And we turned that thing off to something decent. We found something decent, an old, an old movie. Uh, and uh, you've just about got to watch the oldie station now and Andy Griffin, Long Ranger, and all those others on it in order to see anything uh, that you want to be condemned about on the television set today. Let's get back in the Word. Verse 8. Whom we have not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, Yet believing, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Man, last night I had a night. I listened to some preaching last night. I listened to some preaching last night. Uh, the preacher was only 10 years ago. It was 2004 that I was listening to him at a camp meeting. And he was telling how in 2004 the degradation of the United States was probably going to draw the sword of the Lord uh, onto it and, and we were going to be probably punished for it. Well, it is now going on to, into 2014, so that was 10 years ago, and the man was right. We are worse and worse and worse. But you know, God may let it get to be to where it was like with the children of Israel one time. God allowed a dearth to come in the land. The United States has never seen what's called a dearth. It's not like the thing in the 30s. It's not like a little famine. It's like there is nothing. Nothing being grown, nothing to eat. Nothing coming in on a trailer truck, no trailer trucks moving. People killing people in the street. People robbing houses. I had a man tell me one time a few years ago, I had my mission, and in my mission I had a man, and he said, Pete, do you think if somebody's got food in their house that I'm not going to eat? You better believe I'm going to eat. If there's any food in somebody's house anywhere, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to eat. And that's anarchy. And that's what we're going to come to in the United States of America, that the, the nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. And it's going to be hell on earth. I tell you what, there was a time back in Kings where the mothers boiled their babies and ate them. Boiled their babies and ate them. But that's desperate hunger. That's the type of hunger that we would have in the United States. Even right now in other countries you have hunger. Women don't boil their babies and eat them. They just die. The baby dies and they die because the uh, amount of wickedness is not there with them like it is, is in the United States of America. The wickedness in the United States of America is boiling down to where uh, all of this stuff that you see on TV and all these stories and stuff and all this, this uh, vampire stuff and this blood stuff and this stuff and that stuff and cutting people up and and eating people's fingers and doing things. All the stuff you see on TV is one day going to come to fruition. That's just the devil giving you a little uh, uh, insight to what is going to happen on this earth one day. If God turns his head from the United States of America, which I think is two-thirds turned already. I think all we have right now of God looking at America is a silhouette. We have a silhouette of God looking at America, we see the shadow like the sun shining on the head of God. And there's a little silhouette of God still looking because of the few. The few that are faithful 
are holding the gate, holding the flood of wickedness back that will be here one day. Already, right now, there are places in Washington, D.C., where the name of God can't be mentioned. The Bible is not there. There is no God in that area. You cannot say God. You cannot pray to God. You cannot do anything concerning God. That's an area in the United States of America. That's in the United States of America. I was in the state of Maine a few years ago and prayed in a, a funeral home and afterwards that man told me, he said, Mister, if you do that again, I'm going to have you put in jail. I'm going to have you put in jail. He said, you can't come up here from down south or wherever you're from and do that. Just come in here and pray any, any way you want, any time you want. It's against the law. Wow. That's in the United States of America. That's in the, the part of the United States of America where I was born. But listen, we are coming to a day. I'm telling you today. Get in the book. Get in the book. Get in the Bible. Eat it. Chew on it. Start somewhere. Start with Matthew 6 and 9, the Lord's Prayer. Twelve men asked Jesus, how do we pray? Jesus, how do we pray? Jesus said, when you pray, pray, our Father. That's recognizing God in heaven as your Father. Hallowed be thy name. That's giving him glory. Thy kingdom come. That's giving him the ability to do whatever he wants. Thy will be done. That's giving him the ability to have his will be done in your life. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. There's no me or I in there. That's for us. Talking about the United States of America. Talking about the home that I live in. Give us in this home. Give us in the church I'm in. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive those around us. Forgive, 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 forgive. If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. You have a miserable life. Forgive. Forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And that is reverencing God. Reverence God in that prayer on a daily basis. Every day. Jesus said to those 12 men, pray this prayer daily. Pray it every day. Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Wow. Uh, recently, I have had uh, been around uh, some groups of uh, people who uh, say they're born again, who sit down at the table and uh, grab a fork, a knife, a spoon, or whatever, and just go to shoveling. No thought of saying, God, thank you for this food this day. No thought of asking the Lord. I, it, 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 it baffles me. It baffles me. It baffles me. In a restaurant. Man. The Bible said be meek. Be humble. Uh, in a restaurant. Bow your head. Pray a little bit longer than you normally do at home. Be a witness. People look at you and say, that guy believes in God. Wow! Isn't that good? Somebody saw that you believe in God. Listen, our time has about come and gone. And this is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I beg you today, if you are a believer, get in your book. Get close to the Lord. You could do like I do. Go to the old school. Get your, go to five dollar places. It costs five dollars to get a, a, a tape player at uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army. Five dollars will buy you an old tape player. Go down where the books are and stuff and find a set of tapes by some old preacher that some family had thrown into there and they're about to give them to you. They're about a nickel a piece. And you can buy some good sets of tapes, especially Bible on tape. The Bible on tape is everywhere today. I can go out, I can leave this house and come back with six of them this afternoon. They're everywhere, in second-hand stores and everything. And they jump out and they give them to you. And I remember when we used to have to pay $100 for them. And so, go out, get those. Start pumping them in your ears. Start reading the Word. Start following on. Start learning. Start growing yourself. 
from the inside out that you'll be able to fall in line with God and have a happy and prosperous physical life. Well, we'll see you next time. Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word.